Glaston reporting. Well, we've come to perhaps the greenest part of Glastonbury Festival. These are the green fields. And we find a green MEP here, that's Molly Scott Cato, and Sir Dave King as well. Now, Dave, you were Chief Scientific Advisor under the governments of Blair and Brown and a Climate Change Advisor, Climate Change Envoy, under the May and Cameron governments. Molly, you must be in your elements here. We're between a recycling biogas plant and uh, I saw someone doing a vegan bicycle-powered smoothie maker. Uh, I mean, this is, these are your people, this is your event, isn't it? Well, I have many great things in the patch I represent as MEP, but the Glastonbury Festival is definitely one of the ones I'm very proud of. And as you say, it's a, it's a political space as well as being a music space. And are you surprised just how big climate change is on the agenda this year as a Glastonbury veteran? I think we've seen a complete transformation in people's understanding of the, what the issues are and also their willingness to make change. And in a way, people were sitting at home anxious about this, worried about this, and somehow Extinction Rebellion has brought that out into the open and said yes you're right and we need political leadership and that's really made things different for us as Greens. So Dave do you welcome this sort of change in interest in climate change? We've been banging the drum for climate change for decades and suddenly it's centre stage. Yes and so we, we've been here before and then it all withered away uh, around the time of the Copenhagen COP in 2009 and, uh, and then as you're pointing out suddenly we've got a tremendous interest. Climate change is back on the front page. Give us an insider's account inside the corridors of power. How easy is it to get politicians to think about climate change, let alone act? It's never easy to get politicians to think about something that they're not familiar with. So the first thing that I had to do with Blair was to familiarise him with the challenges of climate change. How's it been with Theresa May and David Cameron? Now, I'm absolutely sure that both Cameron and May, during that period in government, felt that climate change was not a vote winner, right? Whereas today, we have Theresa May saying net zero emissions by 2050, climate change has become a vote winner again. Do you welcome? Of course, of course. I mean, that's I mean, quite a big announcement for the government to make, isn't it? It's quite a big announcement for the government to make, but, but why did it take so long would be my question. And secondly, why did they water it down by saying net zero emissions by 2050, uh, but we're allowed to count emissions that are reduced elsewhere in the world due to British money going there. So I, I think uh, it's a pity that it's emerged quite as it has. But I really strongly welcome it. The idea of net zero emissions is now embedded, not only in the British government, other governments are also talking about it. Molly Scott Cato, I know you're a Green, but do you acknowledge for a Conservative government that was a big step in progress on the climate change agenda, wasn't it? Well, I'm afraid that words are cheap and I'm waiting to see the action. So you can say net zero carbon by 2050, but what's the point of that if you're supporting Heathrow expansion, if you're not investing properly in public transport, if you're making it harder for people to do the things they need to do to, to address this really emergency situation we're in? But let's take the Extinction Rebellion cause, which is net zero by 2025. I mean, that's just six years away. So Dave, crunch the numbers on that. Is that even possible? Well, my view is it's, it's a wonderful aspiration and it would be terrific if we could do it. But no, I'm afraid I don't think it's possible. I do think that we will, in order to get to net zero emissions as a country without counting offsets overseas, we will need to plant two to four billion trees. Two to four billion trees? Yes. That's huge. And isn't that the problem, Molly? I mean, you know, you're 2030 for the Greens. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. I mean, it's pie in the sky stuff. Well, I think that we need to really look seriously at recapturing carbon. The, the science is very clear on that. We, we've put out so much carbon dioxide now, we need to change the way we use land. How doomed are we? I think we're in a very difficult place, but I, I'm going to turn that question around and say, can we manage to deal with the climate change challenge? I answer that by saying what we do on this whole planet, we human beings, over the next 10 years, what we continue doing and what we start doing will determine the future of humanity for the next 10,000 years. Wow. So the next decade, absolutely critical. absolutely critical. And can we turn it around in time, do you think? We've had Greta Thunberg, we've had a huge noise about it, do you think it's enough? This is exactly why I strongly welcome Extinction Rebellion and, of course, Greta. The, these two groups and individuals have completely put this back on the front pages. So I, I don't think when we discuss whether Extinction Rebellion were good or bad or whatever, 
the good they've done is because we're all talking about it. That's why you're talking to us about it. We're here in Glastonbury. They've increased the population by 10% in one weekend. People flying in, people helicoptering in from all over the world. How green is this festival? Well, I know Emily Ebis is very focused on making it as green as she can, but obviously there is an energy impact to doing this. But if people are coming here rather than flying to the Caribbean, then clearly that's better. But should we even be here, Molly? If, if we're meant to holiday local and keep local, well, obviously our we, we on this are, massive scale, we, we, are, just we are holidaying anymore. locally. But I think if we look back at human history, people love coming together, they share ideas, they share opportunities, you know, they have that social time. There's nothing new about that. It's a bit like a medieval fair, but on a larger scale. But I, I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, I, I don't fly and I don't think very many people have come here by plane. It'd be interesting to see the, I mean Van Morrison's obviously an exception there but we, we allow him. But no, I think there is a lot of focus here on reducing waste and also reducing energy use and the political opportunities from this festival are amazing because people come here for the music but they always leave with a different kind of consciousness. Will you find time to see some music Molly while you're here? Is there an act you want to see? Are um, you a Kylie fan? I'm hoping I can get some Latin music and maybe even do a bit of dancing. A bit of dancing. What about you Sir Dave? I, I think what is very important to, in answer to your question about Glastonbury is the, the movement to green the global economy is not a movement about taking pleasure out of life. Right? We, we, for goodness sake, don't suggest that that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a cleaner society, a cleaner world where we, the air we breathe is not killing us. So we can still enjoy ourselves just it's going to be better, so. it's going to be a better life, yes. a happier life, less stress, less pollution, better connection to nature, less travel, but you know, as a person who travels a lot, I, I can say that I wouldn't miss that that much. So we're going to have local economies, happy people, festivals are definitely going to be part of that. Molly Scott Cato, Sir Dave King, thank you both.